Welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. Stephen Pineker is the host, and as of today, Mormon Book Reviews has over 2,000 subscribers, 200,000 views, and 200 episodes with well over 2 million minutes watched. And those numbers are rapidly growing. On behalf of the entire Mormon Book Reviews production team, we want to thank you all for your interest and support. We want you to know that we value your feedback, both negative and positive, and look for ways to make use of it. We'll continue to listen to and understand our guests above debating or refuting them. We understand that all opinions and perspectives deserve and demand our respect. And above all, we will always tell the truth and interview in a way that is both edifying and inviting to the spirit. All the voices of the restoration will be heard on Mormon Book Reviews. Thank you for your support. And now, here's Stephen. Welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Pinecker, and I'm so excited. Oh, folks, I'm so excited because I am a total geek fanboy of a particular YouTube channel called Hard to Find Mormon Videos. Now, this is so funny. For years, I've been watching gospel tangents and then watching Mormon stories. That's my TV. And I always fail to mention, yeah, and another part of my watching of Mormon stuff is hard to find Mormon videos. And I've watched, I don't know how many, I mean, I've watched a ton of stuff on that channel. It's like one of my favorite YouTube channels. Of course, it's only, it's been a couple of years since you've uploaded anything. So we want to get you going on this again, dude. But I just want to remind our folks that this is part of our MMR segment that we have here on Mormon Book Reviews. And I have a special co-host. Oh, and I want to give a shout out to Rick Bennett of Gospel Tangents, uh, you the bomb. Uh, Rebecca, uh, my co-host on this media venture that we're on. How are you doing today? You know, I'm good. It's Labor Day weekend. Happy Labor Day, everybody. Yeah. And uh, Tom, how are you doing this morning? You feeling pretty good? I'm feeling okay. Uh, I'm not used to doing this sort of thing, so... A little nervous, but yeah, this, this is what's good. so cool. Like, I never, I mean, you gotta understand. Like, when I started this channel, I would have never thought that I would talk to the guy, this the, the hard to find Mormon guy, as I like to call him, and, and and have him on my channel. So, I am so excited. I know Rebecca, you are too. And I want you to ask the first question because I know you're wanting to do this. So, let's let's roll. <laughs> no, this has been a dream guest of mine too. Because, as I've said before in various interviews with you, Steve, I was raised on the Mormon media. I was not, we did not have a television. We didn't have a lot of access to just regular pop culture media, but what I could watch in my family uh, were the Mormon videos or Mormon content that we could check out of the board library. So I just have a huge soft spot in my heart for all of these videos. And I, a couple of years ago, kept thinking, oh, I wish I could watch Never a Bride again. I wish I could watch um, Angels Among Us again. And I started Googling these and I found this channel called Hard to Find Mormon Videos, where somebody who turned out to be Tom had collected everything so that they would never die, so that we could always revisit them. Because like I said, it's my childhood, my youth. I think I learned everything I ever knew about dating from early women videos i don't know if that's good or bad <laughs> so we're just super thrilled well, we'll to have tom sure to on the, the program uh, oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> exactly so i think i'd like to start out just by asking you a little bit about your background and how you became fascinated with with these wonderful videos that should never die but should live forever okay uh born and raised in utah uh active mormon parents uh not uh yeah born in provo <laughs> raised in orem so very much utah valley uh served a mission uh portland oregon uh 2001 2003 and i don't know uh <laughs> this channel sorry you'd asked uh how did i get started with this just how did you get interested in thinking oh. these videos need to be collected and i'm the person to do it <laughs> <laughs> okay, so obviously, like a lot of us, my age and and, and older, uh, when the teacher hadn't prepared the lesson for Sunday school, they'd wheel in the uh, the TV and the VCR and uh, pop something in. And those were always some of the best uh, Sunday meetings, I, I always thought. Um, yes, yeah, same, same with me, you know, like, uh, well, okay, 
the ones that stick in my mind are the like the really impactful ones, Cypher in the Snow and the Mailbox and all the ones that just make you feel absolutely terrible. But um <laughs> uh but hopefully be a better person. Uh so yeah, um kind of always wondered where those went. And then on my mission, when I was a uh, district leader and we would have like our district meetings uh in a church that was like out in Astoria, you know, you have to drive quite a ways to get there. We basically just uh, half the day was spent driving. And so it was kind of a wash day. And so we'd go to the library, we'd pull out those videos and we'd start watching them as a district. And uh, frankly, a bunch of 19, 20 year old guys just watching these old kind of dorky movies. It would it was MST3K live. It was just a lot of fun, you know, and I don't think we'd we're, you know, we're Mormon missionaries, not being terribly disrespectful, but, you know, it was a blast and just a lot of fun. And so ever since then, I always thought that uh, that would be that would be something fun to do. And I did see it done once uh, really well at BYU uh, live with the with the old Garen's comedy troupe. Um, I, I, if, I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, but yeah. But uh, yeah, they did Cypher in the Snow and and a couple others live, and it was prepped. It was fantastic. Sides were hurting. Just um, so yeah. Uh, a while ago, after like Mormon stories and kind of the Mormon internet really started beyond the blogger knuckle and and all that, but like the kind of the multimedia aspect, uh, podcasts and everything, I thought someone should do a, a Mystery Science Theater three thousand of these videos and. Uh, so I got together a bunch of people who are interested because everyone wants to be on that kind of thing. You know, it's a, it's a really popular idea. Uh, it turns out to be a lot more difficult to make. But uh, I needed videos. I needed video files. Went to YouTube and, yeah, found there's some really bad quality, uh, you know, things out there that were really kind of poor resolution, fuzzy audio. Uh, I thought, you know, I've... I've uh, I, I digitized a bunch of my family's home videos uh, a long time ago. So I, yeah, I was kind of familiar with the process of, you know, rip ripping that kind of stuff. So I just thought I'll do it myself. I uh, went and got a VCR, got a capture card and uh, plugged it in and just started recording. Yeah. From, from the church library, just went to the church library and got a bunch of the videos that I thought would make for a good, a good mock you, uh, mockery, but uh, yeah. You know, Johnny Lingo and a bunch of others. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I needed to share them with uh, the friends uh, who are going to be involved in the project. So rather than just email a bunch of files around or, or draw, I don't even know if Google Drive was a thing yet. Yeah. So uh, YouTube was pretty much the place to put them so that everyone could like at least watch the videos ahead of time. So that was the, the first playlist uh, was on my personal channel with a bunch of these files just all for the purpose of making fun of them. I feel <laughs> kind of bad about that now, to be honest. But uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that, I don't know, it was so exciting just to grab these things and just realize that I was uploading, I was uploading versions of these, but uh, some of them were ones I just couldn't find online, but you know, you could find them at the library. This was back when the library still had yeah. DHS. They, they they hadn't quite cleaned up yet, so. Right. And that's uh, the key, that's why it's such a yeah. service because a few years ago, they just demolished all the media in, in ward libraries. And these things have literally gone down the rabbit hole. So you, yeah. you are the gatekeeper. <laughs> you are keeping oh. the archive. I, I was lucky because uh, at the time I had, uh, this was after I, I got married at college uh, and I'd moved out to San Francisco to, to work. I'm a, I'm a computer programmer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of the story of everybody there. Uh, but, you know, there's millions of people there. And so the war boundaries, even though there's not a lot of Mormons, the war boundaries are actually pretty small. And there's quite a few meeting houses. So uh, and a temple. <laughs> so uh, it actually helped that. Yeah, I went to my local ward meeting house and. Uh, uh, I like them. They're good people. They, they were very nice to me. So, yeah. I uh, would basically ask if I could check them out, check out videos, just VHS after VHS. And uh, after I went through all of their collection, I just kind of spiraled outside on the geographic area and uh, even went to the to the Oakland Temple because the Oakland Temple has a stake center in it. So they have a library as well. And 
nobody used that one and there was all sorts of crazy stuff in there um man yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's sorry, I'm, I'm just reminded now that uh yeah. <laughs> i'm still kicking myself some stuff would be there one week and then the next week it would just be be gone uh i found a, an audio cassette that i don't know why what it was doing in there but uh, it was some it was some prophecies by some it was like a modern recording of like prophecies by some i i don't know if it's like a a crazy kooky member or some sort of uh break off group or something i don't know what it was doing in there but it was just fascinating and i should have grabbed it at the time and copied it but <laughs> i didn't and i went back like a, a month later and i just could not find it i searched all over the three Nephites yeah. took it i'm pretty sure yeah, they were yeah, reading yeah. through the collection so what's your relationship um with the church and copyright. Oh. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, there's got to, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I have my master's in library and information science, so I understand the copyright issues. You know, there, there are certain sensitivities there. Talk a little bit about that. And just the, does the church know about your channel? And I would think they'd support it because it's great that these things are, are archived and kept. Okay. Uh, to be very clear and upfront. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't own any of these. I didn't make any of these um, for for a while. Uh, you know, I I turned on mon monetization on the ones that I could determine were out of copyright that were old. Uh, but frankly, yeah, if you go there and there's like an ad, it's because there's a copyright claim by like Universal or something for music. Um, so yeah, I want to be very clear. I, I don't make money off this. I, I never have, never wanted to. Uh, the channel as a whole, I, it, it's not monetized anymore at all. It just doesn't seem right. And uh, yeah, the, the church owns this. They made this. It was their hard work and effort, their money that, that went into it. Um, and I don't really, honestly, to be to be very honest, I don't think my channel should exist, uh, legally speaking. Uh, I don't think it's right, uh, honestly. Hmm. I, feel, I feel bad about it. Um, on the other hand, I love these, I love these media, uh, all of these media. I, I, I love just going back and seeing the, the old culture. So I'm glad that um, the church has reached out a handful of times, well, through YouTube, through the YouTube uh, copyright thing. Uh, they've never reached out personally. Uh, sorry, I take that back. They reached out once personally um, about an old video that is technically out of copyright and they wanted to discuss copyright so i wrote back to them and said are you referring to this video here and laid out the the research i'd done with like library of congress and all that for trying to determine the copyright status i uh, just want to be sure i'd love to talk and i never heard back from them they, they never responded so i don't know they they might it is one of those videos that was uh I think it's it's a Native American video that deals with like alcoholism. So they might have been reaching out to try and pull down something that might not have been seen as all that positive. Maybe. I think it was bitter winds. Yes, it was. Yes, bitter winds. <laughs> and there you have it, Steve, my crazy knowledge of this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it was all about the reservation and alcoholism. Oh. And yeah, it was a very, a lot of them were tragic. I know they were trying to teach lessons, but, and like you said, as youth or young people, we might've laughed a little bit, but then as adults, you look back and, and there's tragedy in a lot oh, of yeah. it. I, I quite like that movie. And actually, yeah. well, I, get, I get comments all the time from movies I, I never really quite expected. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the, does the church know about this? Um, I only know secondhand through family members and friends who work for the church or have family who work for the church. Uh, I get from them that, yes, they're very aware of it. Uh, so I am tolerated. Um, they they have, uh, the church has a, an extensive media library on their website uh, where you can go and you can actually now find quite a few of these items. Um, and for a while there, I was actually tempted to take the whole channel down because I kind of thought that the trajectory was that they were going to start adding all these things. Uh, as it is right now, I'm, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to continue to add to it um, and continue to obviously honor anything that they ask of me. And because uh, they, they've actually started taking things off of their media library or at least making them uh, impossible to find. 
Uh, items like Johnny Lingo used to be on their media library. They used to be on, they had a YouTube channel, kind of like mine, which was all about just entertainment movies. And you could go there and you could watch the phone call. You could watch Johnny Lingo, all that kind of stuff. I, I even think on mine, I, I linked to theirs because up there, theirs was even better quality. Um, but that's gone now, but they took that down. So yeah, I, I'm just kind of sad that uh, it's a bad title, but at the same time, it's very true. It, it, these are hard to find and they remain hard to find. And I'm kind of disappointed by that, but. You know, it's cool. I because... think it's a great title because that's exactly what I Googled. I'm like, oh, how do I find these? These are so, you know, how can I find these <laughs> old, I mean, literally word for word. And there it was just this Mecca that showed up for me. Yeah. You know, and I came across, I don't, I mean, I probably came across the channel seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 years ago. I don't, it's been a while, but, but uh, I, wow, I loved yeah. it because it was so great because it was just not one one thing to kind of understand the cultural milieu of this time period of it, it, it also was very reminiscent, like you do the old film strips. I grew up on film strips with Bible stories. And so I watched some of the film strips that they had in there. I was able to, because I, people would talk about Johnny Lingo, but I didn't know anything. <laughs> so I watched a little bit about Johnny Lingo. I watched when you still had it up, I was able to watch some of the Johnny Lingo. Now, I wish I had, I'd watched the whole thing because I didn't realize, but I didn't know like, okay, are, is this officially with the church? What your status was? But I, what I do want to say is I want to give props to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, because I think it's really awesome that you're letting, basically allowing this to happen. And I think it's really important because, you know, this channel is about history, scholarship, archives, and you're making an important contribution to Mormon history, because this is part of Mormon history as well. And so it's, it's really important that people have access to this information because it can help. Like if you're if you're a researcher like me who just a fanboy, really, because I didn't know I was going to be doing this. I generally just watch this stuff because I just thoroughly enjoy anything I can uh, about Mormonism. And uh, they, they were very enlightening. And I thought there's cringy stuff. But man, the evangelical, we have so much freaking cringy stuff, too, that I don't I look past that, you know. I think it's fun. And I like there's oh, yeah. an earnestness, there's a naivete sometimes on these. Uh, I, but it was very reflective of a time and a place, a place that you, Rebecca, grew up in. Absolutely. And, and, and so I think that's really cool. So I guess, Tom, I'm, I, I think it's fascinating. I, I just want to, and then Rebecca, you chime in anytime you want. Um, what does it take? Like, what is the process? So you, so like how many hours, let's just put this, how many hours have you spent oh. uh, doing the, working on this channel? Well, Hmm. Like how long does it take to, yeah. the process wow. of taking a film, like a, D, a VCR, uh, digitizing it, uploading mm -hmm. it? What 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 what's the time scale like for like a ninety minute movie? What, what, what kind of prep do you do? How long does so, it? Take yeah, the, the nice thing the nice thing about VHS uh, vi video cassettes is, is that you you can press play and uh, just make sure it's working, and then you can go off and do something else while it's in the background. Um, so for that, the the entire process takes five minutes of setup. Okay. Uh, wait and then come back and and then cutting the film is mostly just loading it up in the video player, seeing where I should cut, and then. Uh, using a, a command line tool, FFmpeg, I, I go through and just slice it up into pieces, and then I've got my pieces. Make load them up in the video uh, video player just to make sure that they look all right. Um, I don't always do a good job at that. I have one that I need to fix. I, I just found out, but um, yeah. So for a video cassette with yeah, ninety minutes of stuff on it, like three or four things, half hour. Oh, maybe. okay. So, now I, I did, this is interesting. Now I just want to know uh, actually, what year? What what was the first video you uploaded, and what year was it? Oh, I, I have to look now. <laughs> um, what was the first one? I don't remember. <laughs> there have been so out. many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so like I said, the the first videos were definitely just um. And sometimes I got better versions, so I would actually get rid of the old ones, um, um, make them private, and make sure I, in the description I had a link to the higher quality version. So, to be honest, the first ones I put up might not even be around anymore. I'm not sure, but they, they were they were silly ones, yeah. But I just got addicted to like going to going to DI, going to the finding these things where it's kind of like, oh, I remember this, yeah. 
tr trying to find things that I had found in that in that stake center on my mission, especially where it was like, oh, I I remember this video. We had a blast talking, doing this video. I got to find it. And then when I put it up on on the internet, and people actually, you know, it's YouTube. People find it, and uh, I started getting comments saying, "Oh, you know, couldn't believe I, you know, couldn't believe I got this." I just started just grabbing everything. So that's why there's so much on there. <laughs> and I, I don't know what the first one is. <laughs> I, I have to go back and find. We'll what have about to the, find it year? before we air and put it in the notes. So yeah, well, I say that you know, I always say it's kind of it's kind of lost growing up in the church in the seventies and eighties. Like I did, I, I would try to describe it to my kids, what it was like. It was just very different and showing them these videos really helped me kind of let them understand um, what it was like. So I I'm also very glad that the church lets this channel continue and is supportive of it because it definitely has a part to play in just letting people understand the history, the cultural history, which is a huge important part of it. So yeah, I, my kids, my kids love the videos. They, they absolutely love them. And I, you know, they're all young adults now, but as a, as we would watch them for family and I, we would talk about them. They definitely have a place in just our heritage and our culture. So I think it is very important. Do you, um, did you, here's a question. Did you ever have that mystery science theater um, with your friends that you that was the impetus to start this or did that just kind of fade and this continued did you ever get together and talk about the videos so I got together with uh the only person that I could really get in touch with to do it was uh, a guy who goes online by the name of Mithrin and uh Mithrin Marius and yeah so we we watched it together we I went through the same process they do on the show of like, you, you watch it like three times, then you try and like watch it backwards, you know, five minutes and then rewind a bunch and watch it out of order. So you can just see things that are odd. <laughs> um, so it took a long time and we got a script put together and yeah, he recorded the same the lines. I recorded the lines. My wife recorded the lines, and then I tried to splice them all together. I spent probably ten hours on that thing, and by the end, I had the full Johnny Lingo with with the audio with, with all of us on top of it. But it just I made it. I, I've I've looked for it since. I can't find it anymore. Um, yeah, it it wasn't that. It, it was too much work, to mm -hmm. be honest. I, I I don't do this for my living. My my I don't do media production. I I'm a programmer, so uh, with a family. So I'd rather do either of those things: be be a dad and, and a husband and and a programmer than than this. So yeah, uh, the first video I uploaded to the channel was "How Rare a Possession," oh, which okay. uh, tells yeah. me that uh, I had probably. Uh, the first video I had uploaded would have been on my own pro personal uh, page, and I would have gotten rid of it after I'd made this site and started uploading these things. But that tells me that I had already had the idea for the channel in mind of just uploading everything. Okay. So now, how rare of possession was about the guy in Italy that finds the Book of Mormon without a cover, right? Yes. And then yes, it's, yeah. it's actually two two stories. Yeah, that's the second one. Okay, so this is this is part of Mormon folklore. Let's talk a little bit more in folklore. So this now I, I've heard this story is 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 in dispute, but I'm going to give the folklore on this, and I think John Hamer, may have either brought this up or, or or debunked it. I don't remember, but either way. So this is this is how it goes. You have this church called the Church of Jesus Christ, based in Naga Hill, Pennsylvania. All right, and they are the Bickertonite, uh, as they're known as Bickertonites. They have this. They had a huge amount of Italian Americans in their church to convert it to their church in in Western Pennsylvania. And one of the first things they did was they came out with an Italian version of the Book of Mormon. And it's possible that the Italian version of the Book of Mormon was not made by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints that this guy came across. It was the Bickertonite churches. So, so the guy actually converted to the wrong church, <laughs> which I think is so funny. So it's possible. This is I'm just adding to the folklore. Mottos. It's so... <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know too much about yeah Vincenzo Vincenzo di Francesca. Yeah, 
I, I don't know too much about that story. I, I don't know too much about the making of the film, to be honest. Um, if he was involved uh, with it, uh, it came out in 90, 1987. So, I mean, he might have still been alive. I'm not sure, yeah. but yeah. No, it's an interesting, just an interesting little background on that. And that's what this is. The, this is what this channel is about. Is what this media thing that Rebecca and I are doing is we're gonna we're gonna cover folklore. We're gonna cover movies and uh, TV series. And we're gonna talk to. We we did a play. We did the the the, the what was the name of the guys that we did the with good the shepherds. The good yeah, shepherds guys. To the directors that yeah. that play. Yeah. And so we're gonna be doing all this type of media and stuff like that. And that's what we're so excited. But I, again, you were one of the first people actually when you and I decided to go on this venture, Rebecca. You were actually Tom. You were the very first person that we reached out to. You came immediately to mind because like we gotta we gotta book this guy because we just love what he's doing. And um, now let me ask you, uh, hmm? what? And what kind of feedback do you get from people? Like, um, oh, you know, I'm like about the movies. Oh. Do you get people saying, "I oh, I this movie really touched me. It helped my, strengthen my faith," or, or whatever? Just kind of just gives give us a little background. What kind of feedback you get from your audience? Uh, overwhelmingly, it is uh, positive. You know, yeah. Uh, thank you for for finding this. Uh, I had I'd lost tr track of this. Uh, I can't believe I have this. Um, Thank you for putting this up. This is what my family watches every <laughs> every Sunday. Uh, we gather around for this. Um, yeah, no, overwhelmingly positive. Uh, I left the comments open on on every video. Uh, I don't like the idea of curating. Just you know, just just let it happen. Um, and I, I'd say, yeah, you go and you'll you'll find on it almost every video you'll find some negative, but I think you'll find quite a bit of positive and. Uh, yeah, generally speaking, uh, any I get reached out to about it slowed down uh, about once a month now or so. But for a while there, it was like every other week, just you know, getting an email or or just a, a comment. YouTube used to have the ability to to send you know messages. I they got rid of that, which uh, but yeah, a lo lot of people very much very much uh, appreciate it and and like it, which I think is part of why I kept going for for so long and. Maybe that's why I've slowed down. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, I, I wonder, would you the, say would you say the majority of your audience would be faithful Mormons? Oh yeah, yeah, de definitely, definitely. Uh, in fact, I, I worry a little bit that uh, I I don't want to cause uh, anybody to have like problems that they find out that the guy running the channel is a former former <laughs> member um, who had his angry period. Not to say it's always everyone has periods, but I, I had an angry period. And I feel like I'm through that now. I, I, I like the people of the church. I love these videos. I, I love the history. So um, I do worry sometimes that, yeah, if, if they knew that that an Exmo was running it, that uh, that, that might be a problem. But that, well, you're that's still a Mormon. Why I'm you're still to step a back. cultural Mormon. You grew yeah. up in the culture. You are a Mormon. What can you what negative feedback would there be? I, I mean, can you give us an example? I'm just so curious about that. Is it somebody saying, oh, on occasion, I'd get someone saying, like, you really shouldn't have some of these videos up, you know, okay. where, where no flag waves or I've been very tempted sometimes to make a playlist of just the just the negative ones, I guess. Um, controversial. Yeah. But to be honest, that, that goes all the way back to the whole point of uh this this only exists by the tolerance of of the LDS Church, uh, and uh, I upload everything, everything I find without without exception, uh, because uh, I don't want to I don't want to upset them. It's their stuff, and if I produce playlists of only the the silly and only the the things that have become culturally uh, not cool. <laughs> then yeah, that, that'll that lead to problems. Other people have made those playlists of the videos because it's YouTube and you can do that. But uh, yeah, I, uh, so yeah, there's some people who've reached out to say, you might want to take some of, you know, take down this video or that video. And uh, I'm not going to, um, but yeah, th there's, there's not that many of those videos out there to be honest. And uh, the, the, the few that have been particularly, uh, troublesome uh i don't have people reaching out to me because those are some of the ones that i have had the the church reach out and 
either through through YouTube or or through email to basically say uh, take this down. So yeah. And if they ask you, of course you do. You you go oh, yeah. ahead and work with them to take down. Yeah. So well, also you know YouTube. If you have too many copyright strikes, uh, which yeah, it's they have copyright claims, and almost all the videos have those for many different reasons. But yeah, if you get a copyright couple copyright strikes, you could lose the whole channel. So it's a resource for so many people for so many of these things that yeah, if they reach out and request to have something taken down, like the the LDS philanthropies video, that one. That one didn't last very long. And, uh, That's the one where they others. told you how to um, give your money to the church through, like basically create it, make them yeah. a beneficiary of your IRAs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a semi-documentary type of film about uh, a, a father actually, you know, uh, talking about how he's trying to keep his family from squabbling over his inheritance, which I totally respect and I, I get, but I, the people who made it did not realize that it had some very definite undertones of coercion uh, that kind of, yeah, it, 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 it didn't last very long. <laughs> but, Do you have any favorites? Like if we said, what's your favorite? Does, does anything oh, gosh. come right away? Um, favorites, uh, <laughs> lots. Uh, I'm trying to narrow it. Um, <laughs> I would say probably Probably my favorite has been, uh, oh, what's it called now? The hippie one. Oh, I used to be <laughs> really good at knowing so all many. <laughs> What? There's so many hippie ones. Which one? Oh, no, no, no. But I mean, it literally, like, uh, with, with, with hippies, it's like an anti-hippie film. Um, oh, I cannot recall the name. Uh, gotta find it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. But, um. Is it the one, one of the ones I remember, and I can't think of the name of it. It was about a young man that instead of going to BYU, he went to state college. Ooh. <laughs> and he came home with all kinds of ideas and a goatee. And his family was very disturbed. You know, these crazy ideas in his head from state college. Luckily, at the end, of course, he shaved his goatee, went back to BYU, and all was who fine but i just remember thinking that my husband and i always make that joke ooh state college you know it means that you're thinking about something right <laughs> what? okay yeah that i i think that's summer of decision i believe i um, think it is summer of decision yeah i think that's yeah. the thing that it is yeah yeah the, i no no this one is um that which was lost that's right oh, that okay. which was lost okay. um 1969 yeah is this the one where yeah. was the marijuana involved in this one? I was trying to think, or just oh, they, they make up some name, it like, yeah, like some sort of like LSD mushroom, thing, yeah, cocaine thing, okay. no, yep. or something. She's flying high, and a lot of like visuals with colors making you think that they're kind of crazy, yeah. No, yeah, I, 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 you don't know the, the main character in this one doesn't actually take any drugs, it's right. just uh, he's friends with a bunch of hippies. Who smell this comes up multiple times they smell <laughs> um but no it, it's a, it's a great one it's very quotable they, they have a they have one character on there who is he talks like shaggy and from scooby-doo to be honest he drives a bus uh, a minibus he's yeah, it, stereotype yeah oh yeah no it, it's fantastic it is a great one uh very very quotable um, a lot of them really are. One of my other favorites is called Never a Bride. And it's about a girl who's 18 and she's not married yet. It's just devastating. So they send her off to her Aunt Jean's dude ranch, right? She runs this resort. And and the reason that this girl is not married is because she just doesn't have any skills. So homemaking skills. So Aunt Jean teaches her to do all kinds of things. And she says things like, if you don't make your bed before you're married, you won't make it after you're married. You know, just very quotable <laughs> life lessons, you know. But I remember watching it going, yeah, wow. And I watched it as a teenager. Yeah, she's not married. She's 18. I mean, it really was the culture, you know. Mm -hmm. So some of those are just so good. Oh, my well, goodness. Marriage videos. Yeah. Yeah. So many. Or, or fun, um, how do I it's... love you? Remember that one? Yeah. Are quoting poetry. I mean, just everybody, if you have not taken a look at this channel or some of these videos, just just go to the channel. You will just get lost. <laughs> just, they're just I, I, I have very few playlists, um, pretty much just by time. 
uh, I've often thought I, I should I should make some playlists just for things like uh, like the marriage films and and other such yeah. things. But uh, yeah, no, 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 I love those. They they all start off with a uh, with a uh, a disclaimer at the beginning, mm -hmm. um, which makes you think that it's going to be like. I honestly don't know what to make of this because some of these videos, the the underlying message, the 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 moral of the story, if if you will, is actually really good. Usually, it's about usually it's something like communication. It's something like you know wait and and be very very careful about who you're dating and all these all these messages. I I sometimes wonder, and this is just me, just me. I sometimes wonder if that. Uh, we 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 see that today, and we're getting ready for. Oh no, this this is like this is from the 1960s. This is going to just be terrible, and it, and it is because it's culturally you know from the 1960s. I honestly think that that warning in there is actually there because of like it goes counter to like BYU. You know, mm -hmm. it goes counter to the message of uh, have have your uh, family home evening groups, go on group dates all the time. You know, get married. That's your focus. Once you get home from your mission, find a wife find a husband and, and these videos really go kind of counter to that that whole idea i honestly think that those are in there to basically say this isn't quite what you might hear at sunday school uh in the young adult ward or at byu so just so you know it's this is this doesn't necessarily represent the views of the church and that kind of thing i, I think that's honestly why they're there i don't think it's there because it's like this is from the 1960s guys give us cut you know cut us a break i, I don't think it's for that so no and uh, i think more <laughs> gritty i mean i remember ones where there are bottles of champagne i mean they showed you know like you said drug use they show this more gritty material. One, I can't remember the title, you probably know, it was about a couple, there were several where they went to Vegas to get married. Like maybe that was the yes. worst thing they could picture, not being together before marriage, but actually not being married to the temple. So this couple takes their VW bug, they get married in Vegas, there's some champagne involved. I remember going, oh my goodness, you know, word of wisdom. And then on the way back, of course, they're in a car accident and oh, one of them dies. dies. And it's yes. just, he's backing away because they weren't married in the temple. And she's like, no. And he's like, but we weren't married in the temple. You know? I mean, it's just very graphic. And, and actually, that is a question I have for you. A lot of them seem to be about um, loss. There's a lot of death sometimes mm -hmm. in them. Um, just really pointing out eternal family, right? If you're not if you're not staying on this path, you could lose this. There, there are a lot of them where a child is in danger or dies. Um, and do you remember the one, I just read a post today on Reddit about the one where a little kid rolls a ball into the street and almost gets hit by a car. There's, you know, there's, I'll build you a rainbow, a mother has died. There's a lot about families being broken up, tragedy, maybe to give you that elevated emotion and also point out you could be with them again, you know, as long as you're you're staying kind of true to to what you've been taught. So, have you noticed that at all? That there's a lot of themes to do. Yeah, with yeah, I, I definitely have. That part 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 of well, at least with the old ones, and that's part of part of why I I do have those playlists and why I put it a date on every single video. Is one of the things that I have found fascinating when I started this. Um, and I didn't put the, the dates on when I first started. Um, but what I found was fascinating was you could go back in time and you could see that there was a lot more emphasis on, on, uh, yeah, on issues of, of, uh, of loss in the past, um, issues of college issues of, uh, I, I, it just felt that you could kind of have a window to a Mormon church that was similar to mine but different because culture shifts, both the culture in the church and the culture in outside in, in America, because it's an, it's an American church as much as they want it to be international. It is an American church. And uh, so I put, I put the dates on there and I made these playlists to make sure I kept everything chronological because it really does help to show the shifts and changes throughout, uh, throughout history. That's one of the things I don't like about the media library that the church has on their website, which is topically based. Everything is about a topic. So if you want to go and find a video on repentance, you type in repentance, and you get a whole bunch of these videos, but they're all just mixed up together. And you lose this, this sense, this, uh, you lose this sense of change, which might be 
partially part, part of the point, a uh, changeless church, you know, we've always been saying the same things, we've always been emphasizing the same things, but we haven't, you know, in the 60s, we emphasized things like drugs and, and, and hippies and protests and which uh, maybe they will again, no, I don't, I don't think they will again, but you know, uh, it was a lot more engaged with the changing uh, American culture at the time coming off of World War II, uh, dealing with Vietnam. Uh, I think a lot of that stuff with, with loss uh, comes from just issues of that the country as a whole was mm. dealing with a lot of the same issues. And so you see that reflected in the media. You know, it's fascinating because when you think about it, when David O. McKay, basically, he's the first one that says, okay, guys, we're going to shave off the beards. We're going to become 1950s suburban America. We're going to be the, the ideal nuclear family. We are going to be the um, you know, the perfect like mo church for this time. Right. Yep. And yep. so now you have, so this is, this is the modernization, the correlation of Mormonism. Right. And so then the next decade you have the sixties. And so I can see why the church would push back so hard against the counterculture because they have finally been embraced by the mainstream culture. And now you got this counterculture that's pushing back on them. And now they feel threatened because their place in society. So they had to, uh, you know, assert themselves. You know, I was I was raised in a right wing Republican home, so I read a lot of the similar types of books. They're anti hippie. I mean, it, you know, it, it's so ironic. Like Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. Okay, it was found by D. L. Moody. The guy has a beard, but yet they wouldn't let guys have beards in the seminary. Same thing with BYU, right? The same. Even though Brigham Young had a beard, the guys couldn't wear a beard in the sixties. There's this, this extreme pushback, and so I think that's part of the. the what was going on then too but you talked about windows and i, I you said a window and i thought well windows of heaven uh rebecca oh. i think um i think you and i would agree that's about our most favorite movie um and before we talk about that i actually want to talk about one other movie and then we'll talk about windows of heaven and that was one of the movies i really liked and i think it was a short i think it was maybe maybe 20 30 minutes long Mm -hmm. i think it was called the forgotten witness and it was about the stair i think it's that was called but mary whitmer and her oh the fourth witness yeah the fourth wit okay it's called the fourth witness mm -hmm. where she was another witness to the plates mm -hmm. and um i i really enjoyed that because i felt like the church acknowledging a woman uh the role that she played it and it's almost like i, I i'm like mm -hmm. why don't they put her testimony in front of the book of mormon too you know it's almost like you can make an argument that she should be there too um yeah. So maybe, I, I don't know, I just found that to be an interesting film uh, for its time and place. I think it was, was came out in the 80s, uh, is that recall? Uh, I, I believe the 90s, actually. That, and that's, that's um, that gets to one thing, which, uh, that, that's a BYU film. And I do need to specify, there are, there are BYU films, and then there are LDS motion picture films. Okay, I shouldn't do that. They, they, they overlap. The two, two circles on the Venn diagram, and there's, it's, it's fuzzy in the middle. But um BYU has the freedom to with the media they produce because it's not the church's name on it it's just a profit but um it's uh they're free to do a lot more interesting things and okay. so sometimes uh they have student films that end up uh on a lot of these uh, in the church media in the libraries uh the widow of Zarephath uh Zarephath uh, I don't know what I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> the the touch of the master's hand, uh, and a lot of the modern ones, um, like like that. Uh, they 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 have a, a a lot more freedom, uh, with with the films they produce, and uh, yeah, that one had to be taken down. There was a copyright request by BYU. Um, mm -hmm. in fact, uh, yeah, a lot of those unfortunately. Th those are some great films that they really are you're, you're right that that one in particular is it's well filmed uh it's well researched like the the whitmers um speak with a, a slight germanic accent because because you know they're they're immigrant families and so uh you never see that in, in other you know regular stuff because no one there's not a neat that the, the purpose isn't history the purpose is um some other purpose you know testimony of the church uh to show how awesome joseph smith is you know that, that sort of thing uh this was just a history you know just like we're taking her account and we're gonna make a movie of it and we're gonna be there with her as as uh, she's shown the plates by a, a mysterious stranger and uh 
Ah, yeah, I love, I love that one. I, I wish, I wish there were a way that other people could see it. I wish I could have it on my on my channel still. But, but so it's not available anywhere else right now. I mean, I understand them with the copyright for you, but is it not mm -hmm. available anywhere through BYU or through? It, it it well, okay, I don't know. It it was. I mean, that's how I got a hold of it. Um, I actually went and and bought the 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 DVD. Um, you you can buy DVDs uh through through various uh through the Deseret book does some through through BYU directly the the digital media department um yeah I haven't checked recently though sometimes I direct people on where to where to get these things for themselves for their for their home that a lot of the requests are sometimes like how can I get this for my family and so I'll send them a link to like the Deseret book product page for like the seminary DVD which also you can't get anymore so yeah, these things go out of print. And they they get lost, and so I'm I, I feel bad. Um, it, if anyone from the church is listening and they want to uh, to put these up, and maybe they're having trouble finding it, you know, I, I personally, in my own personal collection, I still have all of the 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 files. So if if you need if you need a copy of of uh, the Fourth Witness, I, I have one, and I will give it to you if you'll put it up somewhere so that people can see it because yeah, yeah no, it should just be accessed cool. they should not be lost That's well and this the is the thing point. tom i will tell you that i have personally spoken to people who work in the lds media department church media department as well as byu media department they're they're regular viewers of the program Okay. So somebody's going to be in in an office somewhere that's going to be listening to this and oh that's too bad i'm sorry to hear the fourth witness was taken down because i really loved that film i thought it was so good and please Come on, let's get it back up on there. Let people watch that because it's really cool stuff. But Rebecca, as I, we mentioned, you know, uh, we both liked Window, uh, Windows of Heaven. And I, I actually, 1963 version was my favorite because it, it had so much content. It had slapstick humor in it. It, uh, it, it, it and, and I really liked it because it it showed the prophet in a very, uh, I don't know, I, I, I love their portrayal, you know, uh, as how he was shown a very loving man, a very sincere and earnest man. Um, it, it was to me, it's a very touching film. Um, and Rebecca and I, we we've been trying experimenting with this, where we kind of maybe want to do this mystery science theater three M Mormon science theater three thousand. Which, by the way, there was a, a Sunstone group on Facebook that did Mormon science theater three thousand, and that this right. I remember that. Yes, yeah, yeah they, they tried it, but it's it's the group there. I think they did like one thing. So I know this is an extraordinarily difficult thing to do. I think everybody's tried it. Everybody's coming thinking they had the, uh, the this plan or this idea of how they're going to do it. And I sometimes think that if you over plan it, over script it, you might also run into trouble. So we're trying, Rebecca and I are kind of trying to find uh, the right sweet spot mm -hmm. of kind of doing something like that. You, you want to talk about that, Rebecca, a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think all these videos love themselves to commentary, whether it's just uh, cultural social commentary or historical commentary. It's just very interesting to know the rest of the story. And Windows of Heaven has so much in it as far as the historical and the social and the reason that it was put out in 1963, hearkening back to what happened. I mean, there's, there's so much to it. So I would love to find a way to do it, whether we just play it and discuss or, and of course, I think just more an unscripted way that we just kind of discuss. But um, I love to research all these old films. I love to research these videos. And so it's as much just a project for me that I really love, a pet project to work on. And if there's a way to put that content out to others who might find benefit, um, I, I think that would be great. I think we should try to figure out how to do it because there's just so much material. And, and again, the whole point is we don't want to lose this. It's just, it's, it's the entire Mormon culture and the social elements. And that's a huge part of the church that should never be lost. Well, we, we won't lose windows of heaven. Yeah, um, I don't think we will. <laughs> I, I do. One of my playlists is for pre-1964. If, if you follow U.S. copyright law, which is crazy, and I, I have had to do way too much research into this and had to pay researchers who know more than even I was able to learn to do additional research it's weird um you know most stuff is like back in the 1920s but there was a period of time where the copyright actually would expire and you had to opt in to a renewal and uh and they they publish the the information in the library of congress on 
if it, if it was renewed or not. And uh, yeah, Windows of Heaven, I, I, I actually employed people to do the full research on that. It, it is no longer under copyright. Sorry, the 1963 edition is no longer under copyright. The church came out with a shortened version on VHS, which is what almost everybody has seen, uh, because that one was actually a, an edit. It was a, it's a new product. It, the way copyright works, they, that is under copyright. You cannot use that. It has slightly different music, has slightly different editing. Some of the scenes are a little bit out of order. Um, are you talking about the 79 version? Yes. Is under copyright. And then, of course, yes. the 10 minute short 94, I think, is also yes. under copyright. Off, for, so for the only same reason. the 63, that's good to note, Steve. But the 63, only the 63 is, is in the public domain. Uh, feel free to okay. use it and feel free yes. to cut it yourself if you want to cut it down. Uh, I love that film. I, I'm proud of that film. Uh, that's That was my first film strip. I uh, actually went and got a film strip. Uh, I. I have big plans for that. Uh, I was going to make a, a, a web page for it. I was going to, I was going to do like a, did anyone remember pop-up videos from like VH1 back in the day? Yeah. I, I was planning on, I was going to do a pop-up video. With we like were talking about maybe doing back. this. Yeah. We were talking about that. Yeah. All little that kind of factoids stuff. and. Cause there's a lot in that film. Yeah. I mean. So much. Not, it's not history, unfortunately. It's uh you wish I wish it were, but it's but it's not. But at the same time, the making of the film is history. The the uh, the way it, it comes from uh, it comes from President Snow's uh, son from his recollections. So oh, Roy, yeah, he's there's a, all of it. Yeah, the, there's there's a connection there. It, it's a fascinating film, and there's tons of stuff that could be brought up about the production, even like the train that they use and all all this kind of stuff. But there were people in the audience that they were filming who said they remembered it happening which is odd because it didn't happen exactly as said in, in the film. But yeah, no, I, I, I had so many plans for this and I put together, it was going to be expensive to get this digitized. So I actually crowdfunded. Um, uh, I went to the, I went to the ex-Mormon subreddit because I was very active there at the time. Like I said, I was, I was in my angry phase, trying my best not to let it show through into the channel. Cause by that I, I'd realized the channel wasn't for, it wasn't for Exmos. It wasn't for, it was for everybody. So yeah, um, I actually, uh, I was reached out to by an individual in uh, Salt Lake Valley who owns a, uh, a very large uh, company. Uh, he requested that I, I never talk about who he was. So I, that's as much as I can say, because he, he was quite prominent. And uh, I, I Maybe he's out now. I don't know. But at the time, he was uh, uh, physically in, mentally out, I guess, is how it's sometimes put. Um, and so he he just said, how much is it going to cost? And uh, I said what I, I'd gotten some estimates from people who would digitize it for me. And he said, yeah, here's twice as much. You know, keep, keep you know, you, you do what you need to make it. Yeah. And uh, get any others you, you want to have digitized as well. And uh I've always been grateful for that and always kind of guilty because I never finished everything that I had wanted to do with it. And uh, yeah, I'm still feeling guilty right now. Um, <laughs> Could you uh, resurrect it? Could you start working on it again? I mean, do you oh, yeah, still yeah, yeah, sure. I, I, the materials and I, I, I still have my in, in my Google Docs, I've still got all the research I put together on on the making of the film. It, it, it's an amazing film. You know, uh, they, they brought in uh, they, they had Wetzel Whitaker who worked for the, the LDS motion picture studio at the, actually kind of helped start it. The church had made media before he came along, but not much. And he had uh, basically cut his teeth in Hollywood as an animator for Disney. So he had lived in California. He had worked on a number of Disney projects. Uh, and he came back and was basically one of the first people invited by the church to work for the expanded LDS motion picture studio. And that was one of their first major films where they, they spent a lot of money. They hired a lot of actors. They went on location as much as possible. And uh, that's also why if you go to the 1963 version, it feels a little cartoony because it it's made by, it's made by a cartoonist and it kind of reflects uh, how the kind of movie he wanted to make, you know? So yeah, it's got the very serious scenes and then it's got, Mm -hmm. wacky sound effects sometimes. The mouse trap and the crazy <laughs> checkers game and all that yeah 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 
which is what they cut out in the 1970s version to make it a little yeah. more somber and, and, yeah. and serious. But uh, yeah. no, I, I, I love that. And I, I, yeah, I've got, I've got all that information still put together. I, I could still do it. I've still got the original uh, 4k uh, transfer. Um, wow. Like uh, the, the, the raw from, from digitizing it. No, you know, I, when, when, when this guy, I, I gave him the low end estimates of like, you know, here's what they said I could do. You know, I could cop, get it at this quality or this quality. And he, yeah, he basically said, J just go for it, you know, just. So I, yeah, I got the, the full transfer. I got uh, the, the colors uh, fixed, you know, wiped out a bunch of the blobs. And these old films, film strips are sometimes in terrible condition after sitting in a, in a uh, church library for so long not being cared for correctly and and also I don't care for them correctly either <laughs> I, I'm in no condition to do so so yeah they, they need some help so yeah I, I was really lucky at the time God, uh, well Steve then, and I want to be your cheerleaders and say push forward oh my goodness this you know oh, this that movie is uh it's very meaningful more. to a lot of people and oh my goodness there it is Oh, no, no, I, I don't have the original. I'm just saying I, oh, I have I more like, than I'm going to be sending in. <laughs> oh, great. So, but, uh, no, I already have these on the channel, but at least I'll be able to have a better better version, you know, high, higher quality. And what movie is that you're holding? This is the Spencer W. Kimball documentary. I forget the title. It's a documentary that came out basically when he became prophet, uh, just kind of about, about his life and about his uh his push for for missionary work that was kind of one of his big things when he first got in oh and, and this one which is no longer on the channel and i'm just gonna do it maybe just for myself or maybe in the future but uh oh i don't think the webcam will pick it up but uh there it's the phone call I it's love terrible the phone packaging call. that i feel terrible about but i can't do anything about it but uh yeah. i'm gonna get it because i love the phone call it's the original napoleon dynamite it's fantastic yeah. even the hair he even had the head the napoleon dynamite hair so oh it's a great one did you ever see the drop card that was another one that was like filmed at byu do you remember that a shy student afraid that they could stay enrolled and and the counselor works with them and I think I, yeah, I do have that. I do have that. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, good, good lessons, good messages. I mean, you know, positive encouragement, but also very rooted and through the lens of that particular, you know, cultural era. So, uh, wow. Yeah, well, I'm good. feeling like we need to do something on Windows of Heaven. Like th right. this is making me really excited. I just, yeah. I could talk about this forever. Yeah, and I think so. I just, I really appreciate you, Tom, giving this kind of this insider you know, like, like I said, I just did, I didn't, there, there's no context when you just put the movies up. So I don't know anything yeah. about you. Um, I just thought it was fascinating. I, I wouldn't have known anything about your background and your backstory, which I think is so fascinating. And then the process, how this goes on. I do, I do have a quick question for you. Uh, are you yeah. planning on uploading some, it's been a couple of years now. It's been a while since you've uploaded anything. All right, what's the next thing and when do you think you're going to upload again? Uh, the next thing is, okay. Uh, let me, let me check. I've got a couple files ready to go. Well, I say ready, they're, they're not quite ready. Um, I'm not sure. I'm right now I'm debating whether or not to upload a file that I was given, uh, which is a, it's, it's not a Mormon movie, which is why I'm debating. I have very few exceptions. Almost everything I put up, uh, almost everything either comes through BYU production or LDS Motion Picture Studios production. I try to have very few exceptions to that because you know, pe people ask, you know, why don't you have the RM? Why don't you have single sport or anything yeah. like that? And it's like, they're, they're old hailstorm uh, entertainments from like uh, after God's Army came out and every, all of Utah decided they wanted to make movies in, in the theaters. Um, these things just like, they, they just spread out just the, if I don't draw the line somewhere, it's kind of like, where do I draw the line on, on what I'm going to put up? Um, like, yeah, I, I don't put up the old Bible uh, reenactment videos because they weren't actually produced by the church, but the church had uh, some financial and uh, they, they some licensing agreement, which is why they were all in all the church media departments you know, in, in the library. Um, but I won't put those up because it's not technically the, the Mormon church. And I have very few exceptions. Things like 
like like the bridge because i think just everyone remembers that as a mormon movie and i think everyone's kind of surprised when they find out it's it's not or the touch of the master's hand which is also technically not i've got a bunch of other stuff here i've got a, a lot of um like i said from from the oakland temple i've, I've got a bunch of the uh uh pageants uh not pageants, uh what do you call those things <laughs> we don't do them anymore um no, like it, is the, a pageant. it is a pageant. Like right? a pageant that you'd put on before a temple is dedicated? Yeah, yeah. Or... No, no, no. Just just a yearly pageant. They, oh, um, pageant. Okay. you know, like like they, like they used to do in Manti. They they oh, had okay. it every year, and at, oh, and I guess uh, Palmyra, where yeah. I, I now I now live pretty close to. They, I guess, just before I moved here, they stopped doing that. So yeah, those don't exist anymore. So it's important to have the record of that too. Oh, if I could get a hold of like videos of, of those, that'd be great. But but the the, the Oakland the Oakland Temple does uh, a similar one, or they did a similar one every, every year. And I have a couple couple uh, official recordings of those, so maybe I'll put them up together with with that in, in, okay. in the middle. Well, that's, we'll have that's really cool. Man, uh, yeah. freedom, government. Very and the interesting. Temple. <laughs> Very interesting stuff. I. Uh... I'm 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 excited. Uh, just, do you have any time frame when your next video will be going up? Do you have an idea when you think we're going to start uploading again? Uh, tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> it's a wait and see scenario, I guess. Wait. Make sure <laughs> your notification button is turned yeah, on. That's right. <laughs> like I said, I, I want to do research on them. Make sure, make sure I have, uh, make sure well, I want to have the dates right. I want to make sure that it actually is what it claims to be. You know, if it's, uh, you know, I, I like I said, I've, I have completely gone through all the VHS uh, of all the meeting houses around that I've been able to see. Uh, so, so now I pretty much either people reach out to me where they have like a box full of just crud from you know in storage or i go to ebay and actually just <laughs> i have a constant thing pinging me for like film strips or anything like that just to see if i find anything so sometimes i get these videos and they're unfortunately it's a recording of a recording and it has like handwritten in in you know marker on it what it's supposed to be and sometimes it's wrong you know and it doesn't have the right date or it's not actually the thing that they think it is. It's uh, or it's the wrong title. You know, it's some like popular title and it's not what the actual title is. And, um, so I, I don't like to upload it with that info. I want to make sure I have everything correct. So that, okay. that is actually one of the things that keeps me from just, you know, doing it like an assembly line, you know, copy, post, copy, post is, oh, you know, people use it as a resource. I found out just recently that, uh, at, 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 uh, at least in one mission, and I'm assuming if it's happening in one, it's happening in others, at least in one mission, that collection of videos, uh, again, one of the few exceptions to, it's not a BYU production, not a church production, but there was a collection of uh, Manners for Missionaries videos that I found where I was just like, oh, it was so, it was actually really good advice, but also really cringy so it covered the whole spectrum of that so i put that up um and yeah pe people have found that and oh it's all over the place but they watch it in in at least one mission now um uh, <laughs> I, I i i'm uh I, i'm expecting to probably hear from from other people that uh, they they actually show it there so it kind of has gone full circle the the i grabbed these things from the church and put them up here and now people in the church are using them for actually i hear people say that they they wheel in the the laptop all the time now to the sunday school class when they forget their lessons so actually i guess it has come full circle it has i'm the church i'm the church library now i guess you That's are the remaining church library there it is oh. wow coming from a former byu librarian rebecca biblioteca thank you so much for doing this today did you have fun I had fun. I had. I learned a lot. I I want to know more even, but I know we have a little bit of a time constraint. Well, if you have, if you have, if you have, do you have another question for him? Ask away. No, no, that, no, no. If we covered a lot of things. I'm just saying. I would like to just tell everybody go check out this channel. Seriously, you will just be amazed, and it'll be a wonderful nostalgic trip. And if it, if you're younger, it'll be a what? <laughs> you will find some amazing things on there. Yeah, so Tom, thank you so much for coming on to the program today. Was there any final words you'd like to share with the audience? 
Uh, I, I, I've tried to keep myself separate from this channel for a long time. I'll probably still continue to try and keep myself separate. <laughs> uh, like I said, because these are materials made by believing members throughout over a cent uh, almost a century now. The, the oldest one is 1948. So, well, okay, that's not quite a century. Whatever. But believing Mormons made this for believing Mormons. Uh, I'm not. And uh, so I try and keep myself separate so that I'm not... Uh, I don't I want it to be enjoyed by everybody, yeah. but uh, including the including the intended audience. And so I'll probably continue to do that. But uh, I hope that it'll continue to be around. My biggest hope is that it's no longer necessary because the church media library will uh, the, the the online video library will pick it up as well and, and do the same thing and and provide the same. I'd love if they did the same information. I, I'd love that they can show the change over time of church culture and that you could find these things by the, the date when they were actually actually made. But, you know, it, until then, and as long as they continue to be nice to me, um, uh, and, and please don't, don't sue me. <laughs> I don't know, but, you know, just I'll, I'll continue to put it out there because people have a lot of fun with this. And, yeah, whether they're going to, make silly movies of, of silly comments on top of it or whether they're going to show it at family home evening. Uh, I'm just glad people get to see these things that, that I grew up loving. And yeah, I That's hope great. people enjoy it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tom. I, I really appreciate you coming out today. I have a feeling, Rebecca, that I think we uh, we covered a lot more in this episode than I was anticipating and uh, found out some information I wasn't expecting to hear. Yeah. Uh, this channel kind of just seems to run into this stuff all the time, which is so awesome. Again, Tom, thanks so much again for coming on. I just want to remind my audience, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification button for when a new episode comes out. We're working on uploading the uh, podcast audio um, as you can listen to us on Apple and Spotify. We're a little behind on that. We apologize. Anthony's working on it. Also, if you want to support the channel on PayPal and Patreon, uh, there will be links in the description. Also, the merch store, mormonbookreviews.com, in the house. So let's do the mug with your hot drink. Cool. Um, and I just want to thank you all folks for all your support. I want to thank you for all the wonderful comments that you are making. Uh, and, and there are a lot of people who are excited about Rebecca and I's new endeavor. Um, it's still Mormon book reviews, but we're going to do MMR periodically. And, uh, and also do me a favor in the comments section. Why don't you maybe talk about one of your favorite movies from hard to find Mormon videos, or maybe suggestions of videos that aren't in his library that perhaps he should consider doing. And of course, I'm going to have a link in the description to hard to find Mormon videos and hard to find Mormon man. Talk to y'all later. <laughs>